years. Yeah, I know. And in those days, that seemed like a really but long it was time. Forever. Yeah. Because uh, you know, like uh, when people often ask me about, well, did you think Yes would have a 35th anniversary? And I go, actually, mm -hmm. you know, when we started Yes, it was like the Beatles were visible really from like 63 from Love Me Do, even though they'd been in the clubs at Germany and whatever. But you know, they were like the visible thing. And by 69, they'd broken up. And that was a huge career in rock and roll, a six-year yeah. career. And yeah. so, uh, so the fact that Yes actually kind of like, you know, went on to do this like 35 thing is we could never have foreseen that. But at the time when we were in the sin, it was like, he says two and a half years. It seemed a lot longer than that then because that seemed like a pretty, chunk, pretty good chunk of a career. You know, because careers didn't, didn't span that distance. Well, uh, when uh, that, that we got involved with Peter Huggett, remember him? Was that with you? Was that, that was with me. That was that was the same. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. and we recorded that. You remember that? In, like in some studio in yeah. Denmark Street. We recorded Heat Merry Go Wave. Round and Heatwave, and Heatwave, and It's All Right by the uh, the Impressions. It's All Right. We did. We did. Yeah, we did those two tracks. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah, and what a shame that uh, uh, can't. We don't know where they are. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's right, I remember that, yeah. Uh, I remember the funny thing was is that um, Peter Huggett, you know, who was like, I don't know, he was a bit like a Michael Caine of Denmark Street, wasn't he? Yeah. Was like, Lonnie Donegan's like, bass player. He, and he'd he been was. over, was he? Yeah, originally, the Lonnie Donegan's bass player. He'd been over to New York and he, and he came back and he bought us this, this uh, uh, single um, that he said was going to be a huge hit. Um, Reach out, I'll be there. Reach out, I'll be there. Yeah, and we actually actually learned it. And, and I think we recorded that as well. I think we did. Yeah. Yeah. And we did it very well before it was a hit in England. Yeah, that's it right. Probably yeah. was a hit in America already. And then the, the, I think the four tops four brought tops. it out. And it went straight to number one, and we had to shelve it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as I was just saying to Steve, I, I remember us recording a. Uh, like heat wave and uh, uh, and very with Peter Huggett uh, and uh, what were the other things that it's all yeah, right. It's all right. We did um, the the first thing we ever did was merry go round with uh, that Paul Corder track. Yeah, the yeah, acetate Paul Corder, thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the interesting thing about bands of that time, uh, like we were sort of like a little bit in the wake of uh, the Who and the Action, uh, and, and and the thing about what you know, London bands were doing then was doing a, an English rock Motown thing, which we liked, you know, and we, we sort of carried on with that, you know, it was kind of good, because we had the harmonies and stuff, and, and you know, Steve had the, uh, like, the Rod Stewart, uh, Seal voice, actually, he sounds like Seal, by the way, <laughs> I haven't realised. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if you listen back to the early, yeah. early since stuff, it sounds just like Seal, unbelievable. Mm. But, you know, but he had the Rod like image and stuff going, so it was good least seen enough of the, the band. But you know, but Andrew uh, and myself, but having been in the choir, was all like, "Oh, let's do this harmony. We'll do the fifth and the third." And, like, yeah. and, <laughs> and no one so, else was doing that, were they? I mean, well, really, no, I the mean, action, the action, been. except the action, yeah. Really, yeah. And the who kind of did it actually, you know, uh, uh, in a way. Yeah, bit uh, more rough edge to what we did. We yeah, were. yeah. Well, we were a bit more uh, uh, like. Uh, God, this sounds like Spinal Tap, doesn't it? <laughs> it's, it, it's, uh, yeah, we were a bit more, uh, voc yeah, vocally oriented. And, and strangely enough, of course, really what happened uh, as things filtered down is that the, it, a lot of the influence actually got into Yes, uh, at the beginning of Yes as well, especially as Peter Banks, you know, who was the guitar player in The Sin after John Painter, and then, you know, he was the first guitar player in Yes, and so some of the influences and the ideas of vocal harmony sort of started to kick the ball off of where John and I started, uh, you know, yes. And, uh, you know, kind of a lot of the things uh, were similar. I, I suppose uh, what happened was uh, uh, when the Beatles uh, became like an item, you know, in 1963 when I was 15, you know, Everyone, uh, like, uh, who was 15, uh, thought, that looks like a good job. I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's me really too. Right. Me it's too. the same as Steve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like, you know, well, I don't know if I should go and work in the foundry. I think <laughs> I'll go and do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, when uh, that we got involved with Peter Huggett, remember him? 
Was that with you? Was that, that was with me? That was that was the scene. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. and we recorded that. You remember that? In, like in some studio in yeah. Denmark Street. We recorded Merry Go Round and Heatwave. And Heatwave and It's All Right by the uh, the Impressions. It's All Right. We did. We did. Yeah, we did those two tracks. It's all right. It's all, yeah, and what a shame. Uh, 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 the, 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 I can't, we don't know where they are. Yeah. <laughs> but that's right, I remember that, yeah. Uh, I remember the funny thing was is that um, Peter Huggett, you know, who was like, I don't know, he was a bit like a Michael Caine of Denmark Street, wasn't he? Yeah. Was like, Lonnie Donegan's like, bass player. He, and he'd he been was. over, was he? Yeah, originally, the Lonnie Donegan's bass player. He'd been over to New York and he, and he came back and he bought us this... this uh, a uh, single um, that he said was going to be a huge hit. Um, Reach out, I'll be there. Reach out, I'll be there. Yeah, and we actually actually learned okay. it. And I think we recorded that as well. I think we did. Yeah. Yeah. And we did it very well before it was a hit in England. Yeah, that's it right. Probably yeah. was a hit in America already. And then the, the, I think the Four Tops four brought top. it out. And it went straight to number one, and we had to shelve it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I think this thing just came to a halt at a certain point when we thought that we weren't really going any further. I think it was a mutual decision, really. Right at the end, Gunnar had left. I always thought when Gunnar left, that was kind of the beginning of the breaking up the band, actually, because we never really based him. Right. Well, did you think that? He was I, an extraordinary drummer. He was a great drummer, yeah. Yeah, quite extraordinary. And we he never, we never world, replaced really. him, did we? I mean, no, it just uh, it came to a sort of a, uh, a natural conclusion, yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, so you know when, when you're that young too, you'll kind of like get a bit on each other's nerves as well and get a bit, like, you know. I remember once he like chased me up the street and went and beat me up because I said something <laughs> to him. It's not true. Well, he always <laughs> mentions this. <laughs> like, we just had a bit of a ruckus. He was a bit, uh, of, a, he was a bit of a tough, tough lad. You know, you know, but that, but he was that, like from the Italian. Uh, <laughs> and, like, you know, and his dad always used to call him, Steve, my boy. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Uh, you know, uh, you see, it's like a playing uh, an instrument is like an ever evolving scenario, anyway. So, what was on the original record probably now is not the way I play older songs, or you know, or even like later songs, uh, because all the time uh, one's technique develops, you know, through time. Uh, you know, and, that, and that's the the joy of music in a way, really. It's like it's in the fact that you can actually Im improve on what you did. And, uh, you know, so I don't have one particular. That's a very yes, he good, was. Good, that's yeah. a very good description of what Andrew was. Yeah. He was a, he was the father figure of the band. He was a balance of the band. Yeah, you're right. And uh, he was also, also a wonderful human being, a really nice person. And, um, no, it was a g great... Uh, Lost to his family, obviously, and to to everyone who ever ever knew him, and to music, actually, that he he died so young. Um, it's very sad. Well, yeah, because his father was a uh, let me get this right. Uh, I think was it was it a clarinetist, player? was it? Clar yeah, yeah, clarinet player was it? Yeah. in uh, the London Symphony Orchestra, and so he had, yeah. and so all of uh, the kids, Andrew and his other two brothers, were all very musically oriented as kids, you know. So. You know, I went to the choir with him, when, you know, when I was young. It was like, yeah, we were, we were linked, inextricably. Oh, uh, mainly uh, church music, really, because uh, uh, the Andrew Jackman, who was the keyboard player in the sin, was like uh, my buddy from the age of six or something. And uh, he, you know, I was in the Boy Scouts, no, the Cubs, actually. And, uh, you know, and that was kind of boring. And he said, why don't you come and join the choir? Because we make two and six at weddings <laughs> on the weekend, and I kind of well, I liked Andrew and his brothers, uh, Greg and uh, Jeremy, so it was like we were like the guys on the block. So yeah, I went with them, and then all of a sudden uh, we got uh, Barry Rose uh, uh, came down from Cambridge to become the choir master at. Uh, St Andrew's Church, Kingsbury, and transformed like this uh, dead end like uh, choir into like you know the best choir in England, like in about three years or something. And it was like unbelievable experience. So uh, that was really my main influence. Maybe uh, Peter Banks might. No, that's no it wasn't he was actually. In the band called the Syndicats no, or something. That's just a, that was just a, a massive coincidence. The I tell you, the sin actually came from the original. Sin guitarist before Banks, 
Um, John Painter. Oh my God. He, yeah. yeah. I remember his flat. Yeah. In Hampstead. Yeah. We spent a few days there. So. Uh, you know, like, uh, by the time the police came around with synchronicity, it was like, like oh, uh, oh they, yeah. they maybe S.Y.M. meant something. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know if it did, really, did it? No, I have no idea. I the only thing I can think was in, in those days, we, everyone wanted a, a, a short name like The Who. And, and, and the thing we liked about the, the Sin was it was, the, it was that three-letter yeah. three name. But, but I think it was something to do with, with uh, Sin something. Sin... <laughs> Sin syndication, sin something, something you know, like they're coming together. Yeah. Well, I had a Futurama bass that my mum bought me uh, from a, a music store in Wembley first for a couple of years that I liked. Uh, you know, and Andrew was very instrumental in teaching me stuff. Uh, he was very, very influential. Yeah, and then I got the Rickenbacker like, when I was 16. Uh, not really one thing particularly, just uh, like the Beatles catalogue and the Stones and stuff, you know, I just, started to learn stuff, you know.